as we continue to look at the criticism of the priests by God through the book of Malachi, it's important that at this point we talk about the money church. Churches in America are bringing in an estimated $86.2 billion a year from people believing that what they are doing is they are laying their funds at the altar of God and churches are then consuming those funds. Churches are profiting off of mission trips, having 15 to 30 secondary pastors, living in 400 million, 400,000 a million dollar homes, taking trips all over the world, even telling kids that they can go on this awesome camp and charging them upwards of 500 to 1000 dollars to sleep in a tent. And all the while they are tax exempt claiming to be charities. In my hometown, the biggest church brings in an estimated $20 million a year. One church. And how much of that has gone to my community? That much. They do have a food pantry, but that's funded by harvesters. They do throw a community carnival every year, but months leading up to it, they're asking their uh, congregation to donate everything that goes to that. So that the, it's actually the congregation that throws that. The book of Malachi, if we pick it up, we're going to pick up in chapter 1, verse 6. To you priests who despise my name, yet you say, in what way have we despised your name? You offer defiled food on my altar, but you say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying the table of the Lord is contemptible, meaning it has no value, they despise it. And we offer the blind as a sacrifice, is that not evil? And we offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? In other words, what's taking place here is the priests are offering, you know, citizens are bringing in the sacrifice of the Lord, offering up some, you know, oxen, sheep, all sorts of valuable things, and they're only offering up the, def the, the sick and the lame, keeping the good for themselves. Let's continue in verse 9. But now entreat God's favor that he may be gracious to us. While this is being done by your hands, will he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? Who is there even among you who would shut the doors so that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain? I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, nor will I accept an offering from your hand. In other words, what you are offering to God has no value, and more so, he won't even accept it from your hand. In the county that I was in, there were only three small ministries that were legitimately doing God's work. The Christian school, the prison ministry, and a women's ministry. The women's ministry got a ton of money from the government. It's great. Uh, the Christian school and the prison ministry did not. I personally met with every single pastor in the county. And the biggest church in town, when I met with them in Johnson County, the biggest church in Johnson County, Missouri, when I met with the pastor, I had an appointment scheduled with him, I was told to hurry up because he had to go work out. The second biggest church in Warrensburg, in Johnson County, Missouri, tried to cheat us, tried to literally profit off of us, even though they're bringing in millions, and we, to some degree, are at the poverty level. They literally tried to profit off of us, just like they tried to profit off of American citizens. Pastors are living in million dollar mega mansions, flying private jets, and all of this is tax free. Now if we take a look at John 2, we're going to look at what does Jesus have to say about this. And we'll pick it up in 13. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Now I want to stop there for a moment because what is taking place here is Jesus is very upset that his father's house, the temple of God, 
is being used to conduct business and profit. And he specifically, after he chased out the oxen and the sheep and everybody else that's there trying to profit off of the things of God, he then tells the people with the doves to get out of here. The doves were actually sold to the poorest. And, and if you go back to Leviticus, it, when God was giving the instructions on the sacrifices of the temple and the tabernacle, if, he ultimately said, if you can't afford a sacrifice, then sacrifice a dove. So they're literally profiting off of the rich, and they're particularly profiting off of the poor. And there's a lot of essentially profit preaching going on out there, taking advantage of those who are struggling financially. Pick it up in 17. Then his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. Now what's taking place there is that his disciples are remembering a Psalm of David. And so we're going to go to that Psalm, Psalm 69.9. But we'll start in verse 5. O oh God, you know my foolishness and my sins are not hidden from you. Let not those who wait for you, O Lord of hosts, be ashamed because of me. Let not those who seek you be confounded because of me, O God of Israel. Because of your sake I have borne reproach, shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my brothers and an alien to my mother's children. Because zeal for your house has eaten me up, and the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. Because David knew the value of the things of God, and he knew that when uh, the things of God were taken advantage of, it was an awful thing to do. Uh, David understood it. People have always understood this. Today, it's almost completely misunderstood by most. Let's continue in John uh, chapter 2 to continue to see what Jesus had to say. Pick it up in 18. So the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show to us, since you do these things? And Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said. When you're taking in this money, you are defiling yourself. You're defiling the church, but more importantly, you're defiling yourself. When you take in all this money from people and you're consuming the sacrifices of the altar, you are defiling yourself, also a temple for God. You know, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and render unto God what is God. But in the reality of things, they're not doing either. They're not rendering unto God what is his, and they're also not rendering unto Caesar what is his. The U.S. government needs to define what a charity is and take the tax exemptions from anyone not functioning as a charity. Putting $86 billion in your own pocket is obviously not a charity. You know, again, in my hometown, the biggest church in town takes in $20 million a year. 85% of that goes to salary, and the other 15% goes to building and equipment, which makes their life more comfortable as well. Just to simply put on the Sunday show. Now, I know pastors need a salary. That's not what I'm getting at, and I know they deserve more than most because what they do is often difficult. But to consume the sacrifices of God and make it a business is vile to God. And in the temple, there's, which is what Malachi is even talking about to the priests, there's this point where, yes, you do want to offer up sacrifices on the altar. And yes, you do want to make it available for people to offer up sacrifices on the altar. But not in the house of God. Not in the house of God. It's not a business. It's not. It's a temple for worship, and that is all that it is. It is God's. It belongs to God. It is His temple. And those of you who work there, you are God's temple. And if you're consuming the sacrifices of God, it is vile. You know, in Johnson County, uh, the, the county I worked in, in, in Johnson County, Missouri, every megachurch uh, that I went to consumes the sacrifice of the altar. Uh, with the exception of two, and I want to make that an important note, that there are some that are not doing this. 
Um, and how can you, how do you know the difference? Well, if you walk into a church and they put on a Sunday show and everybody donates money and you could see that the pastors are doing very well financially and the buildings just becoming fancier and fancier or they're building new buildings, you're a business. Now, I'm not saying churches shouldn't be beautiful. That's not what I'm saying at all. But if you see that your church is also giving to the community, taking care of their neighbors, loving on the homeless, feeding the prison ministries with financial funds, feeding all the ministries around them, taking care of the people around them just like the book of Acts tells them to do, then they're not doing that. So it's, it's really quite obvious. I think if you go to a big giant church, I think you need to look around and see what is it they're actually doing. If they're taking trips to Israel and charging you to do that, that's not a charity. If they're sending kids to camp, but they're charging $500 to $1,000 so kids can sleep in the dirt, they're consuming the sacrifices of the altar. If they're sending kids to Haiti or, or a mission to Haiti and charging people $4,000 so they can go to a, uh, Haiti and sleep in the basement of a church, they're profiting. It's a business. It's no longer a place of worship. The U.S. government needs to define what a charity is and give exact numbers on what defines a charity financially because they're not rendering unto Caesar what is Caesar and they're definitely not rendering unto God what is God's. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. We'll continue through this book of Malachi. There's a lot more to be said. You know, and I, I want to take a moment and, and say there's going to be a place when we get to Malachi 3 where we talk about the tithes and offerings and, and what our role is in that. And I'm not suggesting you stop tithing to churches. That's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is you find a church that is actually working as a ministry of God and you tithe to them and you quit giving your money to those who are consuming the sacrifices of the altar. Love to hear your thoughts on this. Put it in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you have feel called to support our channel through Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests, so never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love God.